All right, good afternoon everyone and welcome to the Office of Planning and Development's Planning Lunches at Noon or Plan Webinar Series. Um, today we are excited to have um, be presenting about the the Economic Revitalization, Revitalization Zone Program. Um, so we do have our slides available currently on OPD's um, website, which is listed down below the link. Um, we also have our, we will also be recording this session and have that available on our YouTube page, which is linked on that pa training page as well. We also have a schedule for our upcoming webinars. And um, we also have a link to a short anonymous online survey because um, we'd love to hear your feedback and any other topics you'd like for future uh, webinars. So we go to the next slide. Yep, that's what I'm trying. I think that went too far, right, Jen? There we go. Oh, but I think we need to go. There we go. Um, some just webinar logistics. Um, everybody is muted and has their cameras off right now so that we can go through the presentation. Um, we do have a chat um, box that you can include your questions and we will be having plenty of time to answer uh, questions. So with that, we're gonna get started with um, today's webinar. And we're excited to have another staff member from our Department of Business and Economic Affairs, um, my colleague, um, Bridget Beckworth. Um, and she is going to be talking about the economic revitalization zones. And then she's going to also talk about a collaborative project that she did with um, Community Development Finance Authority and UNH Granite. So joining her will be Kevin Peterson from CDFA, David Justice and Samantha Simpson from UNH. So with that, I will turn it over to Bridget. Hey everyone, thanks for coming. Um, so yeah, I'm here to talk about ERZ, Economic Revitalization Zones for you. Um, some of you may, may be familiar with the program. Um, you've heard of it, you might have even used it or been involved in the process. Um, so this is gonna be the overview, I guess, for those who haven't or don't know about it and wanna know a little bit more. Next slide, please. So for, for this program, I'm going to um, today talk about the ERZ and then you can type your questions if you have any in the chat going to try to get to those uh, before I hand the baton over to Kevin uh, Peterson from CDFA to kind of discuss some of the cool projects that we've been working on. Um, so I will get to those and if we don't get to them all then or you think of something after we'll have uh, more question time at the end. So um, for the program ERZ um, really it's you know a chosen designated area by a town or municipality. Um, they choose, they decide. I can kind of help guide them or sometimes the planning commissions will be involved in that, um, keeping it as strategic as they can focused on an area. Some, um, you're really looking to have redevelopment in a specific area sometimes and some towns just need any kind of help with economic development anywhere. So each town is very unique in New Hampshire. We all know that part. Um, their purpose to stimulate economic redevelopment, um, adding new jobs. There's, those are the two basic criteria for an ERZ to um, increase the industrial base, create new jobs, reduce sprawl, all of those. Um, and they're typically in the past, I think these were modeled after something Massachusetts did. Maybe we kind of stole the idea to stay competitive with our neighboring states. Um, and we put them in place and, and it was a great idea and it, it worked, I think, in the early to mid 2000s. Um, we do need more money. We'll get to that later. But um, yeah, it, it's been growing ever since. It's been very popular and it has been um, really oversubscribed, I'd say, since 2011. Um, next slide, please. 
So this is a really important tool for us at BEA. We like to uh, use it for recruitment and retention purposes. Um, although again, the, the the 825 for a whole state, as you can see, that has been in place since the beginning, really isn't enough um, to tempt large corporations. But it's something. So if they were interested in coming to New Hampshire, it's it's definitely something to dangle. It's not a big carrot, but it's something. Um, it, they can only get up to 240 a business um, per year. So they can apply every year. Um, and then they can only utilize 40,000 of that 240 and they, so they have to spread it over over six years. Um, DRA tracks all of that revenue administration um, and it is a prorated program which is nice. I've always liked that because it really it, there's no winners or losers. If you meet the criteria you will get a tax credit. However the more applicants the smaller the piece of pie gets naturally. Next slide please. So these areas, as we talked about, you know, what they're they're designed to promote investment in recruitment and job creation, but um, they help lots of things um, in your area. They this is the one tool that these towns have that can really um, not feel responsible for. This is the one thing the state provides that I know of that isn't like a town based. It's something they have to manage. This all goes through our office and me um, and Taylor. So there's really nothing for a town to have to do or a municipality once they put this in place. I mean, I let them take the reins as much or as little as they want. They some just come to me. They can create a new zone on their own. They it's very simple uh, process than the instructions. So they do that. Some. Uh, get the help from some of the planning commissions or ask me to come speak to um, some of the governing bodies like the selectmen or uh, economic development groups and kind of help just get them up to speed with what this is and how it works as well. Help them kind of understand how to choose an area. Um, but I let them do as much or as little as they want. So if they don't have the capacity and business owners are calling, I can just have them come right to me directly or they can you know, build those relationships and work more with them if they choose. Next slide, please. So an ERZ is an unused or under underutilized industrial park, um, or it can be vacant land, or it can be structures previously used for industrial, commercial, or retail purposes. Um, so in the past as well, it was always initiated as kind of revitalizing a downtown, or it was an old mill building or something, and it was really they're again modeled after something in Massachusetts, so it was there to attract big corporations spending big money. Um, we've kind of adapted it a little over the years and just had it more require a capital investment, which can be lots of things for business. We just want to ensure that we're continuing to help businesses grow. So when they get their tax credit um, after you know creating jobs and their capital investment, they can reinvest that back into their own business. So it's it's very useful and adaptable. I don't want to say um, loosely written RSA, but I will, so to speak. It gives us a lot of leeway, and I work a lot with our friends over at DRA um, to make sure we're keeping with the intent of the program, but still um, doing things that allow us to be more flexible because New Hampshire is just so um, rural and, and so many towns are different. Next slide, please. So it's so easy to get a zone established. That was another thing I loved about this program when I came on board eight years ago. Um, they, um, the town or municipality, you know, I work with them or they do on their own. They just submit a very simple application to me. Um, I look them all over, just make sure all the documents and things are there and, and it's a clear message as to what they're doing and then they go off to commissioner caswell and he uh, looks them over and proves them as well and then you're good to go it's a it's a quick turnaround on those as well um because it's such a simple process that everything's right there there isn't too much to delve into and i love it because it's kind of unusual for a state program or you know you, we all think of paperwork being bogged down like with federal programs and that's not the case so next slide So uh, for a business, um, after 
the town has applied and established a zone, then they too can can start um, knowing, you know, the town will let them know and kind of get the word out that they're in an ERZ and talk to them about what that means and then they can apply. So currently there are 76 municipalities um, with 233 of them sprinkled all over the state. Um, that number goes up every year by a little bit. Um, a few a few get removed every year, some of the really old ones. Um, but it's, again, no economic cost or burden to a town. It's not riding on the backs of them. So it's a nice tool for them to add to a package of a TIF or um, other other credit programs they have that that they do at their level. Um, and I do review those every five years or I have the town look at them um, just to make sure they still have it want it where it is. They want it the way it is because they can be adjusted. They can be made bigger, smaller, or, um, you know, if they really think the area is doing well and thriving and they don't need it anymore, they can remove it. Next slide, please. Okay, so I always talk about project and that just really means the capital investment. Um, I call it a project because everyone's is so different. Every Some companies have uh, lots of new equipment that they needed to purchase to hire new people. Some are doing that whole revamp of a space they moved into. Um, it just depends on the business and how they're growing and what they're doing. Um, it, Jobs just have to be 35 hours full time permanent year round and they have to be incremental. They have to be on top of the jobs. So that gets a little confusing sometimes for um, companies where they think it's just a hire, which could mean turnover versus an actual new job created. Next slide, please. Um, and so once a business uh, gets that credit, they can be used against their BPT and BET. Um, again, 240 is a maximum business can get and they can only use 40,000 a year. But it's nice if a company applies year after year, we have a couple, if they continue to grow, those tax credits are stackable. So if they had 40,000 one year and applied again and got you know more, they could stack that on top of and really um, reduce some significant um, business profits tax for themselves. Um, and it's carried over so that if a new business applies and they don't really have that profit that first year, that can hold over and it can be carried forward, which is nice as well. Um, I always have a hard deadline of February 10 every year um, that the applications are due, which is following the year that just ended. So this coming February 10th will be for 2022. Um, and I'm looking at all things that happened between January and December of this year, um, all their capital investment and any job creation. Next slide, please. Uh, so this is, um, I put this in there for um, an example, just how you could use the credit if you had, a, say, $100,000, you could break it up however your company needed. This is really, I leave it up to a, a business owner and their accountant and what's best for them, because I certainly wouldn't uh, be the expert on that. Next slide, please. And this is, um, the last few slides are really about um, some of the math um, for any of the math nerds out there. And I say that lovingly because my father was a CPA. So take no offense, please. Um, this is how the percentages are calculated. So the higher the wage you're paying, um, the more tax credit you're, you're going to get. And if you go to the next slide, it shows um, part two of the calculation. And when you read this, it's it's a little easier to see it in the math on it, you know, when you when you do it out. But the very last slide here will show you that that math, and um, you guys can all have access to that to to check it out later. But really, and I get asked this often, is the jobs the driver for this? And it is. Um, and the reason I believe that it was designed that way on purpose, so that the jobs are the piece that really gives back to the communities. A municipality can give tax credits to businesses to improve the infrastructure all they want, um, and it could benefit them. But the the actual other benefit is that trickle down effect that we all know that jobs provide in a community. And so um, the way this has been designed, it it is designed for most of the time, uh, you know, most of the time the the new hires are what gives you the bigger credit. I will say some years has been very interesting that um, some companies have hired because the second part is the lesser of the two, whether it be the um, job creation or the capital investment. I have seen some years where um, 
the capital investment plays the bigger role in the in the part two. It just all depends on the project and what a company has going on. It's been very difficult, as we all know lately, uh, with finding uh, people to hire. So um, we've seen a lot of slower growth in that area, as expected um, across the board. So that is it for um, ERZ, you know, kind of the basics of it. Um, if anybody has any questions, I don't know if there's anything that's been coming up in chat. Um, no, there were no questions in the chat as of okay. right now. Great. Um, usually people don't have too many questions. The ones that end up with some of the questions are those corporate level um, businesses with some of the like getting into the weeds and the logistics of when they're moving their company here or bits and pieces of how that's going to play out. But feel free um, to message me um, or if you think of something we can you can pop it in the chat and we can get to it later. Um, happy to answer all those questions or if you are working with a town or municipality um, that you think might be interested in this, definitely reach out to me. I, I can help them get going and establish it. Some towns, um, as we all know, are harder than others. Um, just change is, is harder for them. And so I've had to go speak more than once to people and um, just help them be more comfortable with the program and what it really is all about before they're ready to make that step to create a zone for themselves. Um, I have one um, one town that's really super successful at this would be Summersworth. She, um, Robin, if many of us know Robin Comstag, she is a uh, quite a go-getter. She has a lot of energy and very passionate about economic development. So every year after um, we get to a certain point, maybe about now, she'll reach out to all the business owners in the zones that have been created in Summersworth, and she will it just reignite that interest for them and remind them what this program is and that it's there so they remember to keep it kind of on their on their agenda every year to check in to see hey maybe I can get in on this and so they by far have had the most applications for the last two years the biggest part of this program is marketing and uh, I help with that as well I can give any town um you know some some tricks and easy ways to reach out um, and just give out my contact information as well so they don't have to do any of the work or think that this is going to be you know they're going to get flooded with with things to do that's that's my job if they want it to be but also again i think i mentioned this before some some towns and municipalities and i'll just use keen for an example very um very heavy in the economic development on their own and so i don't tend to get any uh, questions sent my way. They really are quite versed in all of this and they're, that's their choice to be very involved. So I respect all of it, e each side of that coin. So um, just remember to um, pass my information along and, and this, this, uh, these slides as well, if you think somebody would benefit. And with that, I think, I think I'm going to wrap up I would like to pass uh, the torch over to Kevin Peterson from CDFA to talk about an exciting project that we worked on um, when he approached me. Um, gosh, I don't know if it was last year or early this year, but so Kevin, take it away. Thanks, Bridget. And I apologize, my video isn't working, so you'll just have to imagine what I look like, which is just fine. Uh, I'm Kevin Peterson. I'm the Director of Economic Development at CDFA. and um, as, as many of you know, CDFA provides uh, resources, funding, technical assistance um, all across the state to communities around economic development, housing, public facilities, um, and many other uh, uh, programs that are intended to um, help communities move their community economic de development agenda. One of the things that we've tried to do, and we, we realize that uh, many communities have uh, infrastructure in place, sometimes legacy infrastructure from old mills or, or other uh, previous economic activity in their downtowns and main streets and sort of village center areas. And we were looking for a way that we could identify and, and target some of our funding to those places where there is existing infrastructure, where there are um, walkable opportunities for um, having housing and, and shopping and business and, and community services available. And we, we came upon the economic revitalization zone um, designation as, as one possible way to uh, identify some existing areas. And we quickly discovered, as, as Bridget pointed out, that it, 
it does cover some downtown areas, but it covers some other kinds of areas too. So we reached out to Bridget and her team and said, is there a way that we can work together to try to map these places um, so that they're more accessible and more visible, not only to CDFA and BEA, but also to all of you. Uh, and that gave us the idea of also trying to also identify other downtown village center and, and main street areas that um, are appropriate uh, for us to think about when we're trying to work with communities to target resources into those places. So we were able to work with the UNH uh, sustainability program. We've had uh, good success with that partnership in the past and identified a fellow for the summer, Samantha Simpson, who was charged with um, three tasks. One was to digitize and create a, a, an accessible map layer in the New Hampshire statewide uh, GIS program, which is known as New Hampshire Granite, um, so that these economic revitalization zones are actually mapped and available for anybody to see uh, or to um, download into a town's website or uh, through a regional planning commission. Uh, Sam's going to talk a little bit more about that. We also worked with Sam to try to figure out a way that we could identify other downtown and Main Street and, and village center areas. And we actually discovered that there's an existing data layer on the New Hampshire Granite GIS system. And Sam will talk about that a little bit as well. So we were fortunate to be able to work with BEA uh, and with Sam uh, and with assistance from David Justice, who runs New Hampshire Granite, who's on the call as well. So at this point, I'll turn it over to Sam and she'll talk a little bit about uh, the mapping process, both for ERZs and for the community center areas uh, in the New Hampshire Granite system. So Sam, on to you. All right, thank you and hi everybody. Um, so for my fellowship, uh, we had a showcase final presentation. So this, these are the slides that I created for that purpose. Um, since I made this um, slide, I have actually finished 222 of the economic revitalization zones. So that's going to be my final number for the summer. Um, and in the upper left, you can see um, one of the initial maps that I was given. This is a scan of a paper map. Um, all of these economic revitalization zones were initially on paper and each municipality had either created them themselves or reached out to planners to create those. Um, so they're all kind of different formats and some of them are older. So um, my task was kind of to create a cohesive layer where they would all be created the same way or using the same characteristics. So these are some examples of some data layers from granite that I used, the roads and highways, the tax parcels, and the flowing water bodies to um, reference that and figure out where those polygons would be. And um, in the bottom left, you can see that's the finalized version that you can see on the map. And um, so I, I used a few more, they're not all present here, there's railroads and whatnot, but it just shows you an example of all of the different um, reference lines that kind of go into that process. And next slide, please. Um, one of our goals in our final presentation showcase was to kind of pull out a message of our work this summer and Bridget went into of the details of the benefits of the ERZs themselves. But um, this mapping process itself has some benefits um, in the uh, sense that it's a statewide tool that can be used all over um, now that it is kind of more standardized in the process that I used in mapping those. Um, I uh, added this map here to kind of show the diversity of population sizes across New Hampshire and how smaller towns might not have access to mapping software, GIS capabilities, um, robust planning resources. So um, having this statewide tool will kind of remove those barriers and it will be available to planners. It'll be available to the municipalities. And if it's published as a granite data layer, anybody with GIS capabilities is going to be able to access that, whether they're a business owner or part of the local government. Um, and it will be just more consistent and accurate information to be accessed across the state. Um, and then the next slide, please. And so I was encouraged to find my next steps and takeaways for this project. So 
of course, the finalization of the ERZ layer, some of the maps were a little bit trickier to interpret and require some more communication with the towns themselves. So that will be something that will be passed on. And um, then, yes, so I came across this community center area data layer to identify downtowns and main streets in New Hampshire. So um, this data layer uh, takes into account zoning, takes into account population density and mixed use um, zoning. And ultimately I analyzed it against the criteria that I initially developed with the Community Development Finance Authority. And we, um, it seems to be pretty fitting for our purposes. So um, yeah, so the usage of that and potentially the modification if it doesn't exactly suit those purposes could be a future step but um, it's a really good basis for us. And then my own personal takeaways are just how much that I was able to grow in my confidence with GIS. And um, before this, I had really no idea about economic or community development. I'd never heard of an economic revitalization zone. So I've learned so much and it's been a really great experience to meet so many people. in this project. Sam, that's terrific. Uh, this is Kevin again. And um, uh, the community center area data layer already exists within New Hampshire Granite. So um, that's something that anyone with GIS access can go on to the Granite system uh, to take a look at. Um, in terms of CDF, what CDFA will do with that, um, we're going to continue to look at that and to uh, figure out whether it's useful and appropriate to add to our uh, our scoring system for some of our programs. Um, certainly communities as they approach CDFA can, can reference the community center areas uh, as they're talking about future projects or looking at um, funding opportunities and engagement with CDFA um, and the, of the wide variety of programs that we offer uh, for community economic development support. So we encourage you to reach out to us. Um, my contact information will be at the end of the slide. Um, one of the key things about the community center area is that it, it uses a set of criteria, but also community input. Um, so these are places that uh, folks from local communities have had some say in, in helping to identify and designate. And that's really important because what happens in a local community um, is very often driven by the input from stakeholders who live there and who work there and go to school there. Um, in a similar fashion to the ERZ program. So we're hoping this, that this will be a, a consistent way uh, for CDFA to get a handle on um, places that are important to communities um, for continued economic revitalization. And I think we're on to the next slide at this point. Did um, Sam, did, did Ken want to share um, his screen at this point before we go into a full uh, question? Sam can kind of um, walk him through. He had the granite layer um, ready to go for us to kind of see. Perfect. OK, Sam, take it away. All right. Yeah, so that shape towards the lower right in Ossipee, that was the um, ERZ that I had on my first slide. Um, it's not entirely completed, but when I um, finish in the next couple of days, um, joining that with the contact information for the municipality, what's going to end up happening is that you'll be able to click on that polygon. And what comes up currently is just the name of the ERZ and the municipality that it's in, but it's going to have a unique code. And then that is going to connect you with information for who to contact about that specific zone. So um, that's my uh, finishing touches for the next couple of days. And um, yeah, that will provide access to contacts specific to that zone and municipality. Great. Um, and I just want to say, uh, for those that don't understand why this was a big deal for me, um, I am the only one in the state who holds every single map <laughs> in my office. Um, so whenever somebody wants to know if 
you know, their business is in a zone, they have to call me. They can call their town and municipality, but a lot of times, uh, you know, with the passing of a torch and people leave, um, I they would reach out and people would be like, what's an ERZ? And they wouldn't, they didn't even get the download of all the information that the town has or the opportunities there yet. They're just trying to like figure it out and navigate their everyday life. And so um, they would send them back to me, which is fine. Um, but we we needed an easier way and, and loading 233 maps on our website didn't seem ideal either. Um, and some of them were outdated and very, um, as I joke with Sam, I, I'm sorry for the ones that look like they were drawn in crayon um, because some of them were like literally a circle or shape around a spot when you couldn't read roads. Sam had no nothing to go on. She was uh, pretty, pretty impressed. She got so many done. Um, so it's it's going to be kind of a game changer for my for me, but also um, exciting because this this layer means could be the first layer because um, as we know, you can add multiple layers. Um, for economic development tools to start keeping them all in one place because we all know how scattered we are with our things and something's here, there, and everywhere. And now we're going to be able to add layers such as hub zones for economic development and the different things. And then another um, entity could could take this layer and and put different layers that are more meaningful to them with it. So it's going to be adaptable for for whoever wants to use it. Um, so that'll be our next steps, but um, we're just been so grateful to have Sam do this because we know this took some time that no one seems to have right now. And uh, we just really appreciate Sam and she's done such great work for us. So thanks so much, Sam. Um, Sam, were you also, or, or Ken, were you gonna put, the, put up the, um, an example of the community center area from that data layer? I don't think or, I have that information. Or maybe David was going to do that. David's actually raising his hand. Um, oh, I was going to ask Ken to zoom out to the full state so we could see the distribution of all the work that Sam has done. Um, Turn that off too. So you can sort of see this. <laughs> yeah, looks like up to as far as Groveton. Okay. I can um, show you that community center areas layer if you want to see it. Okay, sure. Yeah, I think that would be great. And just while um, while David is pulling that up, um, David Justice, who's the manager for the New Hampshire Granite Program, um, a lot of smaller communities, as as Sam and Bridget mentioned, a lot of you don't have GIS capability you know, in your own town office or it's it's limited by internet access. Um, but you do have the support of your regional planning commission. Um, every one of the regional planning commissions around the state um, has GIS capability uh, in-house. They have the ability to pull these maps down to, to uh, make copies for you. Um, so rely on your, your RPC if you don't have that, that capability within your own community and um, they are your resource for GIS among a variety of other things. So it looks like we've got those up now. Um, so take it away, David. Well, I was just gonna mention, uh, this is our new distribution system here at Granite. And mm -hmm. one of the nice things about it is you don't necessarily need to have GIS software to, to at least view and interact with the data. So for example, you could, um, search for those community senators centers and then it comes up in a map and so that you can see the data um, get some information about it and so on so these things in blue that we see are the community the, the 
polygons from that uh, community centered data layer. Um, and you can actually make a web map. Add layers from ArcGIS online that might be of interest and. Use the data that way, whereas in our old da data distribution system, that wasn't possible. You had to have GIS software download the data onto your own computer and work with it that way. So I don't know if there's any particular area you want to look at, but this is. How the data look. Well, for the. David, perhaps you could um, perhaps you could zoom in on one community. I think I see Franklin there in the middle of the map. You could zoom in on that and just uh, so people can see a little closer view of of what uh, either Franklin or Northfield might look like. And there's I think that's Laconia there. This is Bristol. Oh, there's Bristol. OK, yeah. So these yeah, are areas that have been identified and designated by the communities um, over the last number of years. Um, we're a little unclear how recent uh, the information is and how updated they are, but that that's uh, uh, updating that information is something that we hope uh, communities will be able to do over time. Great. I just I, I think this is going to be really useful for for everyone. Um, and I can't I can't thank uh, you enough, Kevin, for approaching and, and coming up with the idea because this has been something that's kind of been on my radar for years, wanting to do all the ERZs in one place. Um, and just you know how it goes, you just never get to it. But this is just a great example of how partnerships can make things happen like this. Um, and just really grateful and appreciative and really enjoyed the experience all around. We have some questions in the chat if we want to get to um, Q&A session. Sure. All right, so the first one is from Mark. If a company is not profitable, can the credits be sold? No, unfortunately, credits have to stay with uh, one tax ID number. So um, unless somebody took over the business um, and, and acquired the business and the tax ID number, then no, they cannot get sell the credits okay the other uh, question is from noah do you have a process for making sure that erz that get approved going forward will be incorporated into this layer no not yet we um that's something ken and i have um this just kind of all landed in our laps this week the final product so that's something um ken and i um, upstairs will kind of hash out and, and maybe come up with a process of how that works. Luckily, um, we wrote a little. It used to be we were getting quite a few applications. Um, now I don't get that many, maybe three or four towns in a year. Um, and so it, getting those uh, maps in the system might not be as hard for Ken, but getting 233 done was too much of a task to ask him to do on top of his regular duties. So. Um, Hopefully we'll come up with a process quickly. Yeah. And there's another question from Mark again. If tax credit demand exceeds supply, on what basis are the de decisions made? Um, first come, first serve, or jobs, or anything else? Oh, it's it's a prorated program. So everybody gets a piece of the pie, but because of the proration, your your pie piece just shrinks down a bit if the more people that apply. So, for example, last year is again, it's a popular program with the amount of applicants. I want to say we were around 50 people got about 50 cents on the dollar, about half of what they were qualified for. So and and just an side note, you know, there is intent to go for more money for the program since again, this was the same amount as, as when it was established. Um, you you can all probably appreciate and imagine that I've been turned down multiple times for more money, but we have some other ideas of of to get more money for the program going forward. So um, keep your fingers crossed for us because it, it is a popular program and I think it's a, a useful one for, for businesses. Okay, well, I am all out of questions in the chat. Folks, if you have more, please put them in the chat or raise your hand. 
And these are the contact details for all of our presenters. If you have questions later on, you are uh, always welcome to email them. Um, and there's a short survey, which I will put in the chat as well, um, which you can fill out after the um, webinar is done. And we will be posting the recording and the slides to this webinar on our website, uh, which will also go out in the follow up email. I don't think we have any more questions. I am always available, so reach out um, and and by phone or by email anytime. Looks like we might be done a little early today. I want to thank all of our presenters uh, for doing this and uh, for being available to answer questions later. Thank you very much for everyone. Thank you very much for attending the webinar. Um, we will be doing this again next month on a different topic, so watch out for the um, for our website. The information will be posted on there and please fill out the um, form. Um, the feedback form. All right, well, thank you very much everybody for attending and. Um, that concludes the webinar. Thank you. <laughs>